Morning grade 12s, we have been doing a few videos on calculus. Uh, we've gone through the first principles in finding the first derivative. We've done some finding the first derivatives using shortcuts. We did two videos on graph questions and cubic graphs and turning points and all that. And now we're on the optimization or maximization questions, which are more practical questions. We're working out the area of a box or whatever it is, but they're more practical real world scenario based questions. So I'm going to go through a few questions that I've prepared for you this morning. Um, the first question goes as follows. A piece of wire six meters long is cut into two pieces. One piece, x meters long, is bent to form a square ABCD. So there, that square there is the length of one piece, x. The other piece is bent into a U shape so that it forms a rectangle, BEFC, when placed next to the square as shown over here. Okay, so the question ultimately asks us to calculate the value of x for which the sum of the areas enclosed by the wire will be a maximum area. Okay, so first of all, if I see the word area over there, we're going to have to work out the area of a square, which is just side times side, as well as the area of that rectangle, which is length times breadth. Okay, you would also notice that the sides of the square also would be the same side there as the width of this rectangle. However, we do not know the length of that rectangle, which is going to be what we need to work out first. Okay, so if I just move my paper up a bit here, let's remind ourselves now. The square is the size of X, the whole piece there. So what would one side of the square be? Okay, so we can write here, sides of the square would be what? If the whole thing is X, each side of the square is going to be X over 4. Right? First step to establish that. Then, if we look at the rectangle now, right? If the entire piece of the wire is 6 meters long, 6 meters would have to equal what? Firstly, it would have to equal the x of the square, so x, plus two lengths of the rectangle. There's a length, there's a length, as well as that piece over there. What is that piece going to be called? That piece is going to be an x over 4, right? So there is our, our 6 uh, meters worth, x being the square, 2 lengths being those two pieces, and x over 4 being that side over there. So just to simplify this now, we could write L as the subject of the formula, because later on we could substitute that in when we're working with the areas. So if I want to make L the subject of the formula, Remember, that is 1x, and that is a quarter x. So together, that's going to be 5 over 4x. So let's go slowly here. 6 is equal to 5 over 4x plus 2l. If I wanted times everything at this stage by 4, I could to get rid of that 4 over there, and I'd get 24 is equal to 5x plus 8l. Right length. Then I'm going to go 24 minus 5x is equal to 8l. And the last step would be to write L as the subject of the formula. So if I leave it over there, it's going to become 24 over 8 minus 5 over 8x. And we could simplify that one last step. 24 divided by 8 is obviously 3 minus 5 over 8x. Okay, so we have done that purposely so that when we're working with the area now, we have no L. We've only got x's. Okay, so now when we're working out the area of this entire shape, Right, what are we going to be able to do? Firstly, the area of the square, the side times side, so it's going to be x over 4 times x over 4. Agree? Then, plus the area of the rectangle is going to be length times breadth. So we've worked out our breadth already. We know that to be x, sorry, x over 4. And our length, which we worked out now in the previous step, is going to be what? 3 minus 5 over 8x. There we go. Okay, so now just to clean this up, the first term over there is going to be x squared over 16, right? And then if I deal with this, I'm going to times the x over 4 in, I'm going to get 3x over 4 minus 5x squared over 32. Does that make sense? I've times that x over 4 into the bracket. Right, so just to clean things up now, what would we do? We could find a, we could, I guess, go like this. This there, x squared 
talks about a 16th x squared if we want to just simplify that and plus 3 over 4x i'm just writing it in a slightly different way 3 5 over 32 x squared okay at this stage i could times everything by 32 if i times everything by 32 i'm going to get 32 over 16 so that's going to be 2x squared if i times that term there by 32 i'm going to get 32 times 3 what is 32 times 3 96 and if I divide by the 4 I'm going to get 24x and then if I times this by 32 I'm going to get minus 5x squared okay happy just before we go into the first derivative now I can join my two like terms there 2x squared minus 5x squared is negative 3x squared plus 24x so there's an expression now that describes the area of my shape of the shape okay in order to work out the maximum area, we're going to have to find the first derivative. In other words, and I'm going to say bye to the picture now. We're just going to carry on working here. And the first derivative, we're going to say, okay, therefore, dA over dx is equal to, and we're going to use our first derivative rule here to say what? Negative 6x to the power 1 now, right, plus 24. When we work out our maximum, we're going to make the first derivative equal to naught negative 6x plus 24, and solve for x. So negative 24 is equal to negative 6 there, and then we're going to divide by the negative 6 to make x equal to 4. Okay, so there's our answer ultimately in the end, is the value of x is 4. So quite a process in this question. Let's just recap what we needed to do. We first had to work out the sides of the square, x over 4. We then wrote L, the length, in terms of x. Okay, we then worked out the area of the entire shape, right? The area of the square, x over 4 times x over 4, and the area of the rectangle there. Timesing it all out, bringing together like terms, we've got the area expression over there. Finding the first derivative gave us negative 6x plus 24. We made it equal to naught, and we solved for x. Okay, so never easy questions. You always have to think carefully, and they always have a slightly different flavor to them, but hopefully that one makes sense. Right, the next question I'm going to go through is a past paper from a trial examination, and it says the following. A necklace is made by using 10 wooden spheres and 10 wooden cylinders. The radii are of the spheres and the cylinders are exactly the same. The height of each cylinder is H, and the wooden spheres and cylinders are to be painted. Ignore the holes in the spheres and the cylinders. Okay, then they give you a little picture of our, of our bracelet, or our necklace rather. And they give us some useful formulas, except they don't tell you what formula is for what. So just by looking, volume is equal to power squared times height. What is that? The volume of our cylinders. Surface area, 2 power squared plus 2 pi r times height is the surface area of the cylinders. And these two are the volume of the little of the spheres and the surface area of the sphere. So 9.1. If the volume of the cylinder is 6 cubic centimeters, Write H in terms of R. Okay, so not the most difficult. It's only out of one mark, and let's see if we can do it. Right, so the volume of a cylinder is that formula there. Volume is equal to pi R squared times height. So if we know it is 6 centimeters, then pi R squared times height, like so. So now if they want height in terms of R, it means we're just going to say H over there and 6 divided by pi r squared okay so there's 9.1 done we've written it with h as the subject of our formula right 9.2 asks for the following show that the total surface area s of all the paint and surfaces of the necklace is equal to that okay so we know where we're heading we know that's what the answer ultimately needs to be but we need to obviously show the workings to get there okay so for for this question we're going to break it up into the 10 spheres and the 10 cylinders so for the 10 spheres, the surface area of 10 spheres would be what? Okay, surface area, remember our formula for the volume and surface area are there, 4 pi r squared. So now that we've got 10 spheres, it's going to be 40 pi r squared, because 10 times that 4 that was in the front, surface area is equal to 40 pi, oh, that's all we can really do. Hey, I'm just going to write it again. Then for the 10 cylinders, 
the, the, the surface area of the cylinders is that there, 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. So if we've got 10 of them, it means our surface area is going to be, uh, what, 20 pi r squared plus 20 pi r h. Okay. We can now, however, move with the cylinders a little bit further because we don't want any traces of h. We're going to bring in our answer from 9.1 and sub it in. So 20 pi r squared plus 20 pi r times our h value is now going to be replaced with 6 over pi r squared. Keep simplifying. 20 pi r squared plus, okay, the 20 and the 6 can be 120. That pi and that pi are going to cancel. That 1r and that r are going to cancel. So we're going to have 120 over r. Okay, what we could do if we'd like, we could multiply everything by r's, but in fact, let's just leave it at this moment. So if that now is the surface area of our 10 cylinders, and that is the surface area of our 10 spheres, let's work out the total surface area of the necklace. It's going to be 40 pi r squared plus 20 pi r squared plus 120 over r. So the last step is to add these two like terms to give us 60 pi r squared plus 120 over r. And if you look at our question, that was indeed what we were hoping to achieve. 60 pi r squared plus 20 over r, 120 over r, and that is where we are in our answer. Okay, so we got there. Number three says, determine the value of r so that the least amount of paint will be used. Okay, whenever you see questions indicating the least or the maximum or the minimum, you have to use optimization and you have to use the first derivative. So for 9.3, we start off with our formula there and we're going to work out the first derivative. However, we're not quite ready to do it yet. We are going to have to first write out 120 over r as 120 times r to the negative 1. Okay. Now when we go ds over dr and work out our first derivative, we're going to get 120 pi r and then minus 120 r to the negative 2. Okay. At this stage, we could now make our first derivative equal to naught, like that, and we're going to get 120 pi r minus 120 r to the negative 2. We could, if we'd like to, multiply everything by r squared. By multiplying r squared, by everything about r squared, we're going to get 120 pi r cubed now. And if I times this by r squared, that's going to leave me with 120. Because r to the power negative 2 times r to the power 2 is going to give you r to the power 0, which becomes 1. If we've made it equal to 0, we can now solve for that r over there by taking the 120 across and dividing by 120 pi. We are now going to be left with r cubed. Before we cube root both sides, that 120 and that 120 could cancel. So r cubed is 1 over pi. At this stage, if we cube root both sides, like that and like that, we're going to get r equal to our answer. And here's where we grab our calculator and we're going to work out the cube root of 1 over pi, where's pi buttons on that one, and push equals, and we're going to get 0, 0,68. Right, so there's the radius that's going to ensure that we get the least amount of paint used for our necklace. Okay, so 9.1, 2, and 3 done. I will make one more video with optimization questions. Hope you enjoyed this video.